Step 2. Creating the Structural Grid In this step, we'll place a grid system with dimensions along with columns placed at the grid intersections. Open the 2.2 Creating Structural Grid folder in the Navigator view map. Activate the first Structural Grid preset view in this folder. Activate the Column tool. Activate the Column 1 Favorite in the Favorites palette by double-clicking its name in the list. Activate the Dimension tool in the Document group of the toolbox. Then, activate the Linear Dim 1 Favorite in the Favorites palette by double-clicking its name in the list. Finally, activate the Grid Element tool in the More group of the toolbox. Then, activate the Grid Element 1 Favorite in the Favorites palette by double-clicking its name in the list. Please note, if there are numerous favorites in the project, first activate the tool of the element type you wish to use. Only favorites belonging to that element type will be displayed in the Favorites palette. This will help you to find the necessary favorite entry faster. Select the Design, Grid System menu item to open the Grid System Settings dialog. A grid system is a collection of elements, including grid elements, columns, beams, and dimensions. Grid elements are always placed, while other element types can be placed optionally. In the General Settings panel of the dialog, you can set whether the grid will be orthogonal or radial. Further, you can select which element types should be generated along with the grid elements. Check the Elements at Gridline Intersections checkbox. In the drop-down list to its right, select Column. This will place columns at each gridline intersection point when a grid system is placed. Click the Settings button to the right of the drop-down list you just set. This opens the Column Settings dialog. The settings you now see in the Column Settings dialog are the ones that were set by applying the Column 1 favorite. This is why we applied column and linear dimensioning favorites in earlier steps. They will be created with those settings when the grid system is placed. Click OK to leave the dialog. Check the Dimension Lines checkbox. Enter 1000 into its value field. Also, check the Total Dimension checkbox. Enter 500 into its value field. This will cause dimensions and total dimensions to be generated for the grid elements and will set their distances from the end of grid elements. You can specify the settings for the individual grid elements in the Grid Elements panel. Click the Grid Elements Settings button to go to the Grid Elements Settings dialog. Grid elements have their own settings, including Show on Story, Gridline Type, and Pen, both on the floor plan and in sections and elevations. Naming rules for the axes, as well as for the markers, can be customized. Markers can be placed at either or both ends of the grid elements, and so on. Click Cancel to return to the Grid System Settings dialog. The Naming Rules panel lets you specify the identifier names for grid elements to be generated. They can be set to be generated automatically, for instance, letters starting from A for horizontal grid elements and numbers starting from 1 for vertical grid elements. In the Grid Positions panel, you can set the spacing for both horizontal and vertical grid lines. In the Horizontal Grid Lines field, enter 7500 in the Distance field for grid line B. Click the plus sign above the Horizontal Grid Line list twice to add two new horizontal grid lines. The distances automatically assigned to these grid lines are the same as the distance of the grid line preceding them. Modify the distance value for grid line C to 9000. Now, in the Vertical Grid Lines field, enter 7500 in the Distance field for grid line 2. Click on the plus sign above the Vertical Grid Line list successively until you'll have 19 grid lines set. Scroll down 
and then modify the distance value for grid line 9 to 5200. We've now set everything needed before placement. Click OK to close the dialog. Place the grid system by clicking on the point shown by label 1.1. Then, by clicking again on the point shown by label 1.2. The first click defines the position of the first grid line intersection. The first and second clicks together define the horizontal direction of the grid system. An information pop-up appears stating, as the result of the last operation, elements have been created and or changed their position on currently unseen stories. This is because the grid system and its components are created on all stories. We can ignore this message in this case. Click Continue to have the grid system generated. As you can see, not only grid elements, but also columns and dimensions were created. Activate the next preset view from the Navigator view map. This will present the entire structural grid we have just created. Click on any grid line on the floor plan and notice that all other grid lines are also selected. This is because of a feature called Auto Group. When several elements of the same element type are created in one step, the Auto Group feature causes a new group to be created automatically and these elements to be added to it. Click anywhere on the floor plan to deselect the grid lines. Groups are useful when you want to move related elements together. Activate the Edit, Grouping, Suspend Groups option to suspend groups and to edit elements individually. Click on any grid line on the floor plan and notice that none of the other grid lines are selected now. You can also suspend element groups using the Suspend Groups toggle in the standard toolbar. We will use the Suspend Group command because we need to modify the location of grid lines. Click anywhere on the floor plan to deselect grid lines if they're still selected. Make sure that the guidelines and tracker buttons are activated in the standard toolbar and activate the arrow tool from the toolbox before proceeding. Select the horizontal grid lines. Draw a selection rectangle by clicking near label 1.1 and label 1.2 to define the diagonal of the selection rectangle. Please do not click at the point of the label because that will select the labels instead of drawing a selection rectangle. Right-click on an empty area of the floor plan to activate the context menu. Select the Move, Drag menu command from the context menu. Click anywhere to define the starting point of the drag vector. After you've clicked, a little info box called Tracker appears to the right of your cursor. The tracker shows the distance and angle of the cursor for your first entered point. With its help, you can accurately input numerical values. Move the cursor horizontally to the right. You can use the guidelines to find the appropriate direction. The tracker should display zero degrees in the angle field. Enter 5000 on the keyboard and then press enter. Then click elsewhere to deselect the currently selected elements. Select the vertical grid lines with the arrow tool by drawing a selection rectangle. Click close to label 2.1 and label 2.2 to define the diagonal of the selection rectangle. Select the Edit, Move, Drag menu command or activate it from the context menu. Click anywhere to define the starting point of the drag vector. Move your cursor vertically upward. The tracker should display 0 or 90 degrees in the angle field. Enter 5000 on the keyboard, then press Enter. Click elsewhere to deselect the currently selected elements. The grid lines are now at their correct positions.